Hi, and welcome to the School of Bitcoin weekly faculty meeting. And um, today, uh, well, we're here every week just to share knowledge and learn a bit more about Bitcoin and what's, what Bitcoin thinkers are building and doing. Um, and today we're going to, Jacques is going to tell us about his OS3 project. And OS3 stands for Our Story Open Source Operating System which um, if you've ever wondered, um, you know, how a DAO can work, um, Jacques's ideas are, are really, really interesting. And I've been looking forward to this. Take it away. All right, thanks. Yeah, just like a little bit of an intro. So the, the meaning behind our story open source operating system is it's meant to be like a storytelling protocol. So the fact is that civilization is built on stories. It's our mythologies. It's, it's all of those, you know, it's just like the, the scripts that we tell ourselves that define our reality. Like from when we're a child to like the, like the global scale of everything that we do in geopolitics. So the idea with our story open source operating system is let's take like these standard storytelling frameworks. So like there's the hero's journey and let's turn that into the journey of how we create collaborative communities. So if we can take our story structure and we can open source that so everyone understands how we tell stories and we can apply it into an operating system that we can put into our institutions, our cities, our schools, our city blocks, we can use this framework ideally to, to really empower people to restructure their lives, be a little bit more self-sovereign. So I'll share my screen. I, I created like an MVP around this and it's all based in, uh, in GitHub. So here we go. Okay, we're good. All right. So everyone who comes, who creates a platform ecosystem or a DAO with OS3 will be creating their own um, GitHub organization so this could be for a, for a nonprofit organization, for a school, for a company. This could be for a city agency or for an individual or a learner in the School of Bitcoin. And everything, we have templates and designs for all of this. So this just shows like how you can have like your profile. So I used OS3 to create this template account here, which is just um, our story. Everything is music. So this is what I use to, to kind of con conceptualize everything. And this just shows that um, this is a way to introduce it. So yeah, it's our story, everything is music. And it's the idea is to turn your creative projects into open source ecosystems with OS3. And then specifically here, we have that we're gonna be creating an onboarding program for your ecosystem. And the objective is to publish an onboarding program with GitHub, which is like this, this operating system that we're using initially and Figma, which is the design framework that has all these templates for people ready to go. Um, and like, we're starting off with onboarding, um, but call this a platform ecosystem because every one of these within this template will have 10 different platforms within it. So you start off with onboarding and you go to training, which is like your education. Then you go through the governance, operations, product, like the product management, the design, and you go through the storytelling aspect, like a brand mythology, uh, the marketing, publication for writing and sense making, and then finally a portfolio where you have everything that you need for, you know, creating contracts and monitoring your proof of work to demonstrate your value. So this is really just the intro, but the actual uh, uh, the actual GitHub repository is right here, and this has everything you need to walk through it. So. It had, like the README uh, introduces you to everything. So you're gonna be turning your creative idea into a platform ecosystem for growth and collaboration. I'm not gonna read through all of this. It's probably a little bit more wordy than it needs to be, but really it just shows that there are 10 main deliverables for every single platform. So when I talk through all these different platforms, each one of them inside of it, it's kind of like a fractal. So there's 10 platforms and within, within each of those platforms, there's 10 deliverables. And each one of those deliverables you can think of as a different step within the proof of work for creating that platform. So I like to think of each one of the teams that you create. So like we're creating an onboarding team right now. You can think of that as a block within your DAO. 
So you're creating, you're going through all the proof of work, work protocol um, with each of these items to ultimately uh, end up with a completed, uh, completed framework. So this has the links, the installation instructions for all of it. So as you go through each of these, you, you'll be cloning this repository for yourself. But as you go through each, you'll see that there's questions and you could add in your responses in line. And as you do this, it fills out your metadata that's used throughout your entire uh, project. And as you work through each of these steps, um, it's kind of hard and it's difficult for people to work through GitHub. So I've also created a front end client that uh, allows people to, that you'll be able to, to view things. So this is really like, you can think of this as the minimum viable product for all of this. So GitHub is really the back end. So it allows everyone to stay connected and it manages all of your information. And with GitHub pages, I just created this very simple um, layout. And this has really the proof of work for what I did when populating everything for, uh, for our story. So I'll just run through a couple of these, but um, just like the first deliverable you have, you're going through these responses and you're, you're filling in metadata to, uh, to really define four key players within your ecosystem. That's up here at the top. So all platforms, so whether it's the Apple App Store, whether it's um, the, you know, the Bitcoin operating system, whatever it is, there's like these standard characteristics that are consistent throughout all of them. They have four key players. There's an owner of the operating system. There are providers who's really the interface. So if you think of, uh, let's think of Apple as the owner of the App Store, the provider where people interface with the App Store would be like your mobile phone or your computer or your iPad. So all platforms have a provider. And then you have producers and consumers, the people who are really exchanging information. So we're gonna be creating the exact same uh, structure for a DAO within the School of Bitcoin or a student that wants to create a project with their friends. So that's what each one of these sections is running through. So when you're creating the owner, I wanna do it through the lens of a city. So people are gonna think of themselves and their ideas as like a singularity. And then they're gonna think of their cities as a multiverse of all the different companies and nonprofits that are playing together and interoperating with one another. So here, like really the reason I'm doing all this is because of a, non, like a, a volunteer trip I did like over 10 years ago, I went to Haiti and it just completely changed my life. Let me to quit my job. So the city I really wanna focus on is Gressier uh, in Haiti. And I wanna bring it creative freedom and you choose a nonprofit that's gonna be your basis of design for how you transform it. I'm not gonna I'll spare you on all these different details, but then you go through the same thing for the provider and then you create the metadata for the provider. So who are the designers that are gonna be creating this ecosystem and de deciding the, 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 the creative story behind it, the mythology. And that, that's really gonna be tied to like uh, the, the AI and machine learning industry. You're going through like the producers. So who's going to be the engineers within your ecosystem coming up with tactical plans about how to actually carry all of this out. Um, that's really tied to blockchain operating systems. Finally, you'll be defining your, the consumer. So who is going to be the client within this? So really you're going to have producers that are mainly going to be open source contributors. And then the consumers are going to be whoever is going to be uh, purchasing the product that your DAO or your platform ecosystem is creating. So that's really creating the metadata for uh, your operating system. Let me go back here and I'll run through, I'm just gonna show the, um, the governance here. So the governance is based on uh, Noster. So this is a direct derivative of Noster and it's just, this goes through exactly how the protocol works. So with OS3, I wanna keep it pretty simple that um, the only two things you need to worry about is that there are platform teams and there are platform projects. So every person is going to have a team of one and they can also be a team of many, but every single learner, every individual is going to be their own team. And then every team will create their own project. Not everyone doesn't need to have their own project. Like I could just be a team and I could just bounce around from project to project, however I want to contribute. But all they need to know is that as 
more and more projects and teams join, if they follow this same structure, they'll easily be able to exchange value between one another. One, one uh, ecosystem might be really focused on design. Another one might be really focused on tech. And they don't have to worry about knowing everything because they'll be able to collaborate with one another to bring each other's projects to life. And this just shows like when you're defining your governance, this is where you also define who the players are that I was talking about. So in a general sense with our story, and this can be this is different for everyone, the owners within our story are agricultural nonprofits, just because I feel that agriculture is something that is really the foundation of our civilization. You know, the quality of our food, it defines like the quality of our gut health, the quality of our day-to-day -day lives. The providers are going to be our city agencies. And I, I, won't, I have always shied away from city agencies and governments because I just think that they're corrupt, but really I think they're just exhibiting like unconscious behaviors that we all have. So I wanna be really intentional and say, okay, if our cities are how we interact, like I live in an apartment and this is the interface, this is my interface to the world. So our, our agencies, our governments, they are our providers in a sense, even though I know in the Bitcoin world, that might be a little bit like, there might be a little uh, friction thinking about that. But if we, if we realize that our agencies, our governments, our institutions, they're, ex, they're a fractal projection of the human condition. So if that's the case, let's really start thinking about how our agencies act as our interface to the world so that as we learn from our owners and nonprofits, we can integrate some of those ideas to make our agencies, instead of them being something that they put, bring down mandates and they govern how we have to operate, they become vessels and platforms that just foster our self-sovereignty. That's the idea with this. The producers are gonna be open source contributors and then the consumers, just because I have a background in civil engineering, it's gonna be the AEC company. So that's architectural engineering and construction companies. We're going a lot more and more in digital. Everyone's getting really excited about VR and all of that. But I think that the most exciting thing with this is if we can really use these DAOs as a way to get these ideas that, I mean, if there, was, there could be a six-year-old in Afghanistan that comes up with an idea that people in New York start contributing to, and then you have someone in Austin, Texas that picks up the idea and they decide to build it. So that's the idea here. Like we're going to have these ideas in the digital realm, but we're going to be able to bring these to life all over the world because we'll be able to connect with one another in our collective story. So that's really how the governance with all this works. Um, let me see which other ones. Oh, and I just want to show how this ties into GitHub. So this is really just the front facing. So this is how everyone will be able to see this, but you can see I have a link here. So our story's governance. Um, is managed through our GitHub discussions. So if you just follow this link, it takes you to our GitHub discussions. And within here, you know, we have, this is essentially, it's a, it's a pretty similar to how things operate in uh, Discord. So this just has all the different channels that someone would need and you can conduct polls. Everyone who's operating can view the conversations that we're having within here. And uh, let me see, I'll go through some of the other ways that this ties into, uh, ties into GitHub. Let me go back. All right, so I'll also show the operations. So the operations of all of this, and one of the biggest inspirations for how we're gonna be managing this is, it's really, again, it's my background in, in construction management and how we manage projects, you know, we have to manage the designer, you have to manage the subcontractors, you know, we have to deal with so many different entities. And um, also with something that I just learned about a couple of weeks ago, I think I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, uh, platform engineering and internal developer portals and internal developer platforms. There's a company called Backstage that was developed by uh, Spotify and they created an internal developer portal with the idea of making all the code that's needed to run Spotify, making it so that anyone who's building the code knows exactly what they need to carry out anything that they wanna do. And they call it like developer self-service. So they're all about optimizing the developer experience. With OS3, the developer is, again, it's a learner, it's an individual, it's a family, whatever it may be. 
So with our operations, we're, we're doing it with these, with internal developer portals in mind. And you can see at the top, this is our story's external developer portal. So we want this to be a way for everyone to see how we are carrying out all the different tasks we have. And the first thing you really wanna do with an internal developer platform or an external developer platform is come up with your deliverables and a software catalog. So this shows up front what are the tools that we're going to be using to create our DAO? So with each of the platforms you create, again, there's gonna be 10 different uh, deliverables that you work through. And this just shows you'll be completing your metadata, you'll be defining a manifesto that really just finds your vision, assigning your platform players, like I just showed uh, related to governance. Um, with here at the operations, you'll be defining your deliverables and uh, software catalog publishing a minimum viable product presentation about what product you're creating, publishing a pitch deck and a design template, coming up with a mythology for your protocol with music and a storyboard and world building and all the imaginative things that make people excited about Lord of the Rings and Marvel and all of these stories that really capture our imaginations. All of that's gonna be accessible in these DAOs. Finally, you'll be launching a go-to market strategy coming up with a publication so you can do really thoughtful writing and improve how you make sense of the world. And then you'll be publishing your onboarding, uh, your, your protocol, your proof of work protocol. And on the far right column, you see all the different softwares that we're using. So we'll be using GitHub repositories, GitHub wikis, discussions, um, GitHub pages. And then for design, we'll be using Figma for storytelling, Instagram, marketing, Twitter, or X. And then for publications, we'll be using Substack, and then for your portfolio, we'll be using a website called Payhip. And also we're gonna be using GitHub sponsors so that people will be able to get sponsorships from the community. They're uh, like, they're, like they, I don't think there's any fees for people receiving donations through, through uh, GitHub sponsors. So that's how people are gonna be able to fund and maintain their projects for what they're contributing to open source. And again, this is just the front end. So this all ties into templates that once someone does this, they'll be able to copy over the entire project catalog. So within GitHub, there's a really impressive, I'm realizing my screen might be really dark for you guys. There's a really impressive uh, project management feature and uh, it allows you to, to view things as Gantt charts. You can view them as like, you know, like a Trello board. And in here, I already have all the steps needed for someone to, to carry this out. So you'll be reviewing a website, you'll be going through all the steps of understanding how this works, and then you'll be able to, to, to go step by step until you have everything completely done for your DAO. So people don't have to worry about, oh, do I do this, do I do that? It's like, we're gonna tell you step by step. First, you click this button, then you're gonna clone this repository, you're gonna change these templates, you're gonna publish it to this website, you're gonna use this template to create your first blog post, just so people can get like, the muscle memory of everything it takes. I don't want people to be intimidated with code. I don't want people to be intimidated with design. I just want everything to be ready for them so that once they get going, they'll realize that they have the ability to do whatever they want. The idea with this is for people to realize that we're all design engineers. Every single human being is a polymath. That's not just Leonardo da Vinci. It's not just the people who are self-proclaimed polymaths. If you're a human being, you are an, like, an unimaginably incredible phenomenon that we've never known before. So every person needs to realize that we just need, there's no curriculum around it. So with this, as people are creating DAOs, they can realize that they'll be able to do this for themselves. So again, all of these are, are templates. So you'll see here, so for this onboarding checklist, people will be able to come in here um, and, sorry, and just completely close. Dark. Sorry. Is it? Oh, sorry, yeah. here, let me try to brighten it up. Yeah, it's on dark mode, I guess. And then um, also for marketing campaigns. So once someone has a DAO, how do you launch this? So included with all of this is a 21 day go-to market strategy. So there's a template for every single blog post. So let's share your metadata on, on uh, Instagram. Let's share a book quote. And it's like, what books are you gonna be using for your marketing campaign to show what your vision is? Let's share those to Twitter. And this has every single one. And then since you'll be on a team, 
you'll be able to, to move things through the process, through the approvals, how you schedule it, how, how you track your engagement. All of that's already in here pre-built so everyone can just get up and running and start building their dials and focus on what they want to do most. I'm going to go back. Almost done here. <laughs> and then um, I guess here, I just talked, touched on it. So yeah, this is like the marketing aspect. So this just shows once someone's coming through, we want to get them started really easily. So you're going to create, you're going to choose a book that is going to, to be like a common thread throughout everything, the cord through everything. So for our story, the book is Doubt Aging, just because if we're going to be influencing our city agencies, it's one of the most impactful spiritual texts that I've read. And it's just really, it's like, it's very um, neutral and it's all about just people's self-sovereignty. Um, there's also, you're going to be choosing a book that teaches you about ego and how you're going to be identifying um, yourself and how you operate in the world. And I use Eckhart Tolle, uh, A New Earth. That's one of my favorite books. Yeah. You'll be choosing a book related to, uh, you know, the game that you're going to be doing. And since this, this first aspect with onboarding is related to our language institution. So I chose a book called Conversational Intelligence. So as we're sharing book quotes from this, we'll also be creating little games throughout this. So there's going to be card games and, you know, like NFT games that we'll be able to integrate. And finally, with biomimicry. So what is the aspect of nature that you're going to be using to tie all this together? And this is a really, really fascinating book called Cell Language Theory. And it talks about how, how the intricacy of cells led to everything in our civilization. And in a sense, I think cells are the most sophisticated decentralized autonomous organization that's ever existed. It's the smallest unit of life and just a single cell turned into our entire civilization. So if we're trying to create DAOs and we're trying to restructure our institutions, we should realize that the first institution that's existed in our realm is our eukaryotic cell, the thing that actually governs our system. So we're using biomimicry. So some people might choose, you know, there's a lot of people in the Bitcoin space are, they're talking, I think it's uh, Brandon Quinton. He's always talking about like uh, mycelium. So like some DAOs might choose to truly focus, hone in on the mycelial network or some DAOs might choose to, to focus on like the human body because I think it's the most sophisticated natural system that we have. But again, this is just to help someone set up their, their go-to-market strategies. Then they'll create a Twitter account for themselves. They'll paste that right in here. And then they'll create a Hype Fury account. And that's how they're going to schedule their Twitter posts. So again, with all of this, we want to train people and help them take every single step that they need in order to, uh, to bring this out. And then really like the, the part that I'm most excited about is the storytelling aspect. So every single one of these steps, um, like the, the first step for onboarding is how you define like the, the title of your epic playlist. So, you know, epic poems, they're, you know, like they're, they're tales that like really tie to like the human experience. So every DAO is going to be creating its own epic playlist that has, it's going to be a, a musical story um, and you have all the songs here that's all integrated, um, where people are going to be choosing a story that coincides with each one of their proof of work deliverables. And as they work through here, they'll be going through the steps of world building. And world building is something that every single movie goes through, every single video game goes through, every short story, you know, like the, the authors start off with world building. So is this going to be it's like, let's make this a recognizably Earth-like story so that we can tie cool uh, connections. But let's keep it fantasy based so that we can stretch our imagination about what we can do in the real world. We're going to include mythology since it's like one of the strongest like bedrocks of civilization, but it's going to be science based so that as we're building out this world, we'll be able to learn about gravity in the real world as we're defining the gravity in our virtual world. And there will be multiple intelligent species. So like the four key players, you know, like the, the nonprofits, the agencies, the open source contributors and the, uh, the um, like the companies that you work with, each one of those are going to be manifested as different beings. Like they could be elves or dwarfs or orcs or whatever it might be, just like in Lord of the Rings. But people are going to be able to inject their own creativity into this in their own way. And this just walks people through like, okay, who are the different entities that are going to be making up 
everything that is in your creative story. And as they go, they also choose the music behind this. And the idea about this is, so you're going to be putting together this, this project. You know, I showed like the, the operations plan, but this story is going to be a direct link to the actual product that you create. I don't have the product screens in here. This is just an outline, but everyone's going to have a, a product that they really come up with. So people are going to identify a problem that they want to solve in their city. And then they're going to create a proposal based on a nonprofit solution. They'll connect with different companies and they'll put a project out into the world that others will be able to invest in and help them grow. And as they do that, they will be effectively creating a parallel reality. So the, everything that they do in the real world, as we're transforming our cities, will have a direct link to that mythology that they outlined. And, and really, how do we bring this all to life, right? So um, it, it's important that people have an effective pitch deck in order to do this. You know, I could talk about cells being cool DAOs and everything being tied to mycelium and all that, but that's not really practical and it's not necessarily gonna get people funding for them to, to fuel their, their, uh, their projects. So the, the design aspect of this is helping someone put together an effective pitch deck. For the past year and a half, I've been working on trying to find a, uh, a shared template that shows people how do you create an effective pitch deck. So this walks everyone through it with this set of questions on this single page everyone will be able to create their own pitch deck for whatever it is that they're creating with their DAO. Define your problem, define your solution, and it just has, in, within the brackets, all they need to do is change it for their own ecosystem. And you go through everything, like how does it work? What's the underlying magic? What's your value proposition? What's the business model? And then finally, it goes, goes all the way down to, what are your financial projections? What's your ask? Like how much do you need to fund this? And people in the ecosystem will be able to help people figure it out. and um, help, you know, promote one another's work. And then again, all of this is always tied to, um, to templates. So as someone, once someone fills that out, they'll be able to, like, I already have a template here made in Figma that allows someone, it's going to take a little second to load here. Second. It's not showing right now, but all the pages for the pitch deck are, uh, are on this page. But um, yeah, that's really everything I wanted to run through. Effectively, everything like with the, the bright white screen is the, uh, the front end that's gonna eventually be a Nostra client that's, you know, it's really well designed and people will be able to, 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 to keep their certificates for everything they, they, they create. Those could be NFTs, but really they're just gonna be proof of work certificates for everything that they learn to up-level their skills. And, um, and it'll also be able to be a wallet so like how they transact with one another um but yeah i'll end it there and i will shut up <laughs> no, that's fantastic so it's good to get stepped through it because i mean i've had a look at the github and and yeah and now i know where to go to have another look um so to to onboard to to, to create a community in this space it starts with a nostra client does it like you're creating a nostra client? No, so yeah, the Noster is like down the road. Right now, everything is just getting. So all someone needs to do to get started right now, um, I want to make sure that this is something that's very collaborative. So someone will get a, uh, an onboarding agent. So I'll be able to work with someone and like they'll clone the repository. And then like we could just like we could start a chat. So that could be on Twitter. We might chat or we can chat right in within uh, GitHub or Discord, whatever it may be. And then as they work through their disk, as they clone their GitHub and they work through each of the prompts, they'll be creating their entire repository. They'll be creating their own, um, their own site. Everything I walk through, they would be creating for themselves. Their own yeah. network states, I suppose. Yeah. That, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Now, that when, you, when you talk about a six-year-old in Afghanistan with an idea working with someone in New York and someone with Argentina and no one really knows really that much about each other but they're on a on a common creation mission and, yeah, um, yeah really so we have this idea of um, network states and that's what a DAO essentially becomes doesn't it if it if its network is big enough it becomes potentially state-like <laughs> large community. yeah I really don't I don't I don't think blockchain is necessary for a DAO 
You know, yeah, it's, a, okay. it's a very cool and interesting technology. You know, there's a lot of really interesting features, but GitHub has everything you need to create a DAO. Okay. And okay. Git, yeah, and Git is the <laughs> most like, go ahead, what were you saying? Oh, sorry, yeah, as you're saying, I just wanted to say on that, that's a strong point that you don't need blockchain to have a DAO because what's holding up DAOs is the tokenization issue, isn't it? The, the Howie test that we, we've been through this, Gordon and I, with um, some DAO projects, all the angsting and delays have been over having a token, <laughs> voting tokens, <laughs> governance tokens and um, value tokens. So what is the, what is the um, currency in this in this DAO that you would build on GitHub, Bitcoin. Uh, it would it would be whatever anyone's currency is. So it could yeah. be US, like for this MVP, it would be US dollars or whatever country they're in. With with uh, with GitHub sponsors, they have like uh, it's available in a lot of different countries and it's continue continuing to expand. So like I'll have a GitHub sponsors page because I want to keep maintaining this and I would love this to be my full time profession so I can keep. Uh, contributing to this mm -hmm. and um, I think everyone should be able to do the exact same so that's when they create their portfolio that's the last step so once someone creates their own DAO they'll also be creating their GitHub sponsors page so that people can start contributing to sustain their open source efforts so I mean it's a, you know GitHub we, we have an entire team at GitHub that are building this out for us so we might as well take advantage of it instead of struggling to do our own thing but then as we get this going and as we prove out these concepts with github we can then bring this concept and just give it to stacks we can give this concept to uh, tbd we can give this concept to polka dot so all of them can also create their own DAOs within github but then they'll be building their blockchain on top of it so then we'll be able to interface with one another allow everyone to build it out in their own way but then that's, that's, I want to have true interoperability. So like, even if you're creating your own DAO on your own blockchain, we can still jump down to this sub layer of GitHub and exchange value and collaborate without having like all this maximalism between GitHub, I mean, between Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that. So I want to, like, I hope GitHub can be like this, you know, it's like the, everyone's talking about layer one blockchains. GitHub is layer zero really, you know, so get down to, get down to the base. So we can focus on building our MVCs, minimum viable community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So I think we get held up on our MVC because we're trying to build everything else, all the processes and the, the pathways, the roadmap that right. you're, you're creating here. Just follow the prompts, follow the steps. And yeah, yeah. bring anyone in and there won't be any, it won't be a concern if they're, you know, they favour other forms of currency, I suppose, other other ecosystems. Okay. Get yeah, it's like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, like, there's, it's interesting. There's a lot of really good uh, GitHub actions, and GitHub has a lot of automation within it. So at this stage, it is going to be pretty clunky. Someone's going to need to go through, clone the repository, and they'll have to go through and edit each page. But I want to learn a lot more about GitHub Actions because there's something where you can go to a repository, there's a big green button, you just click it and it walks you through prompt by prompt. And that would be ideal. Because at that point, you'd, I mean, a seven-year-old would be able to walk through this and create their own DAO. So that's that's really the, that's where we really want to get uh, ultimately. Excellent, that is where we want to get to. Well, let's keep getting there. Thank you for this. We'll share this with everyone to, um, to um, yeah, understand what's happening with our story network. And um, we'll keep following it from here. Okay, I'll stop recording. Thank you. And it can be oh, so oh, empowering. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Did you have questions, Karen? About? Did anyone have any questions about? That? Yeah, I I uh, came in late, um, but Karen, you go first. That's okay. I was just going to say it's very empowering, and um, that you know ha having the prompts as you go along that can be very reassuring if you're doing something new and you're not sure, but you're still doing it yourself. And um, it, and the fact that um, it's so open that children anywhere can add their thoughts to the story and build it together. It's such a teamwork thing, you know, very collaborative teamwork, but not limited by what your idea is. It's really open sharing. And um, I think that's beautiful. 
Yeah. Very accessible. Yeah. Jordan. Oh uh, yeah, Jacques. Um, quite incredible. That's uh, you've got a. Is that a team at GitHub working on that with you? You've got a lot of content. Oh, I don't. No, huh. no. I'm just saying. Just the company GitHub is working on it. Ah, sure. So yeah, all, all, I, of, I all of, it's a huge, <laughs> incredible amount of content that you put into that. Into that story. <laughs> yeah. It's like quite nice. mind -blowing. So it's a, it's an, uh, it's a really relevant. Um, piece that, that you're working on i mean particularly how we started with the school of bitcoin and having that learner fund and, and projects being able to be built out of it and so there's a couple of things that um that are happening i i you know i did the advanced deployment reply blockchain and and during that i i did a project for a dow and it came down to that and and the idea behind that was um so yeah how would me as a contributor to the to the, so it was a charity, okay? So how would I contribute and what projects would I wanna fund and how could I participate with that person that was looking for the funding, you know, to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So when they've got all these things here in there, you can quite easily make an assessment about where they're at. So for example, when it comes to funding, um, there is, uh, I came across something this week um, in, in which is like taking it somewhat to the next level of the funding and it's called angelblock.io. Uh, and, and it's a quite an interesting uh, interactive site, way more interactive than I'd, I'd seen uh, on, on some others, um, where, you know, you can, you're basically at that pitch point, but it's got everything, you know, having something there so I can go in and have a proper assessment of whether I wanted to contribute an investment to that project. <laughs> So yeah, I thought that, and I was, I was thinking about it um, as to there's a there's a, um, a a startup weekend coming up with Stacks, which is Ready Layer Two. It's actually next weekend, and it's to punch out ideas and collaborate with others to advance ideas, just like you've got here. So if you're available next weekend on the 18th, you might want to join that. It's a three day event. Yeah, yeah, so, we like to join it. Uh, so I also see, see some relevance, like so Stacks are also proposing a community fund. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen what's going on there. So there's um, Hero Gamer has put up a, well, there's been a call from the community that everyone's putting up pitches to the foundation to get funding, but the core focus at the foundation at the moment is, is really um, critical, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, critical bounties because they've got so much development of the chain that you know the question is is does a little project of some kind add value to the ecosystem so they've got this new proposal for a community fund which will have some you know say for example twenty five thousand dollars worth of stacks and you could apply so then Eric, uh, the question would now be is how are they going to assess the projects and who gets the funding and the like so i see him very and and back in the stacks foundation grants you have to actually load up if you apply for a grant you have to do it through github but it's a very short process and mm -hmm. there's probably a lack of yeah i'd imagine there's a lack of information there so if someone went through mm -hmm. a process like this they could have a better assessment by the community so it is actually something that maybe stacks might want to use to say yeah sure we want to fund you but we want you know we want all the docs we want to know you're legitimate we want to know you what steps we want to know that when you launch you've taken all of the steps so it could be very viable to to be implemented yeah yeah i would i would love i think that would be such a great tool to help yeah like to help stacks vet their projects you know someone should come to them with an mvp that could just be a presentation showing how it works and you know showing how, how are you going to build your project how are you going to market it how are you going to write about it like you're gonna pop, uh, pop podcast for it so yeah i would i would absolutely love to that's now that i'm finally at this point i really do want to get out in front of stacks to see how we can potentially work together and because i would i really think we could build something really cool with this for the school of bitcoin i think it'll be really really impressive because you you all already have such a, a thriving network and you have so many events where you're going and i, I know you already have so many people that are building and sharing ideas. So I'm curious what they would build um, if they had their hands on this. 
Yeah, it's a disciplined process. It's like, uh, I guess, if you're going into a, a into a program, you know, a startup program, it's a proper formal documented process. I mean, it may be something that, um, you know, you could work with BTC Startup Labs on, um, mm. see if it's something that they'd want to use to, to, to run their processes through, you know. Um, so yeah, we can maybe jump on a chat and, and look at a couple of links. Um, yeah, I would love that. For, for that, because it all looks super relevant. It's just implementation and adoption by some people to use it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like you I feel like you have such a, a good, like you're so plugged in to like all of these different ecosystems and funding opportunities and hackathons. So. I would definitely love to to pick your brain on like what advice you might have about how to move forward with this. And I, honestly, with all of you, like uh, Karen, I would love your feedback on how we can really build out like the story side of this because that's again, like I said, it was the most my most exciting aspect of this for me. And yeah. I really do want to see how we can turn like how can we turn this process into a children's book. And then yeah, Electra, I, would, I mean like the the accounting aspect of this, like the proof of work protocol behind this, I would love us to have a really robust accounting system behind this. And, and again, it's like if, if each of us, because in a sense, we can think about like really, if we're thinking about the school of Bitcoin or the days, I could be sitting here as just like the onboarding platform. Like Gordon, you could be like the governance platform since you know like how all these ecosystems inter like interplay with one another. Electra, you would really be like the portfolio platform with like all the financing. And then uh, Karen, you would be like the, the story platform, you know? So even right there, that shows how we can each just focus on whatever we do on our own. And then the, the days wouldn't have to exist on a single GitHub profile. The days would exist on each of our GitHubs, you know? And then we, we would be able to, to jump into each other's projects. I could learn from each of you and then we'd all have our own curriculums based around what we do best within the Bitcoin community and in our, in our cities and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I think, I just, I think this could be a, a really cool way to roll this out with the school Bitcoin. All right, muted. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so much scope there as you've just hinted. Jacques, I also saw that in, in your getting your funding ready and getting funding like getting um yeah to a point where you could you're, you're investable um there's also uh an open source platform that i direct people to airtree uh airtree's open source docs so it's open source vc so it's got great advice in there for you know how to approach funding and what not to give away and the like so they're they're a vc oh. company but it, it could be a, something there of some very good resources. Yeah. It just are, these, are, all, are all okay. these links in that uh, spreadsheet you shared with me a few weeks ago? I still um, got, I haven't really dove through all those. Um, you, remember, you know? I'm not sure which one that was. You shared one. You, it was when you told me about open sets and you, you shared a, a Google spreadsheet with a number of links. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll, okay. I'll have to look. I'll have, I'll have it. But yeah, not to not to feed you too many of it. Uh, it it's um, no. yeah. It's if we're going, you know, it's accelerating when you've got the right places to go to go. Who would use this? And learning also from the guys going through the BCC startup labs is getting the validations very quickly um, in a turnaround by uh, talking to someone like, say, Hero Gamer at Stacks, who's working on the project to to how to vet the the funding with the community, it's not his project, it's everyone's working it out, uh, working, looking with BTC Startup Lab. So, you know, it's having some interviews with them and saying, hey guys, have a look at this, what do you think? Um, having right. and, and getting it into a short pitch and getting a validation very quickly. So, you know, what to go to next and how to change it. All. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go time. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Hey. I'm Sorry. sharing a couple of links here, Airtree and Angel Block. I, I shared the BTC Startup Lab 
www.ncpsf.com link to see that the, the next round is coming up in November. Okay. Yeah, so B, uh, BT Startup Labs is turning basically, their, their main goal is to turn a service into a software. Hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's I'll a probably thing. be applying for that one too. So, because um, I've got service a service to a software is 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 a basically scalable solution. So you know you 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 can mm -hmm. um you know instead of working your manual labour you've got it automated. <laughs> yeah, <I think. laughs> that's what we're going for. So yeah, I'll see you uh, next weekend. I I want to make the time to go to the Ready Layer Two. I just couldn't find the web link for that one uh, to register. I <laughs> registered. Have you got that there, Electra? Um, but I was going to do it on something about the charity. I had to think about it. But yeah, it's a startup weekend. So it's basically just like the traditional startup weekend, but it, it's to do with, it's really, I think that they're, they're going to have a bunch of different things in there. It's really, I think, a focus to get the, the, the minds ticking about SBTC and what can be mm -hmm. built with SBTC. But it's run more that anyone can join in from zero, don't have to be a coder, don't have to be a founder, just getting people immersed in the whole startup process from, from ground zero. So that should be a fun weekend. Yeah. I'm looking, yeah, I see the website here. It's readyl2.com. Yeah, it's, it's a stack. So oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, it being in Australia, I think we'll be, yeah, I think they're going to do it in a format which you can do it from anywhere in the world and participate. Um, okay. But it's a, yeah, it's just a good methodical process for us. I've never done a startup weekend, so it'll be cool. You're right. Ready Lab Two. Uh, oh. And Adam from the foundation has has done many many startup weekends. So. Okay. Uh, very experienced in it, and so I think that's the idea. Because you you know it's like the the next the, the next one after that is the Bitcoin Olympics, which is way more intensive. You, you know, it's another level of, you know, you've got to, you might have a team or you're looking for a team. Whereas I think the startup weekend's more just let's, yeah, let's learn all about what it'd be to generate an idea and maybe a quick valid. I think it's a quick validation to a pitch in three days. Yeah. Okay. Really startup lab. So much, so much to keep track of. It's exciting. <laughs> oh, you're I'm, just, I'm just setting up all my tasks now in my calendar <laughs> and just need to switch off for a week and not talk to anyone to get through them. <laughs> just give yourselves time to breathe. <laughs> oh, it's all worthwhile. Uh, look, I know it is. I know it is. But you've got to look after yourselves too. Prioritising. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to go back and uh, do, a, do a replay of the start of that, Jack, because I really appreciate your time. Yeah, I Thank look you. forward to continuing. Okay, so <laughs> I'll see you all next week, hey? Terrific. Um, Thank, okay. Thank you very much, Jack. The possibilities are very exciting. <laughs> I will remind everyone about next week and to, to watch this to keep up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> see yeah. you. Have a great week right. every weekend, everyone, <laughs> and week. Jack, you on, uh, you're on Discord? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is that, a, is that a good place to communicate with you? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, cool. I'll jump in. Cool, I'll see you, man. All right, okay. perfect. See you. <laughs>